amazing His love is never ending Beyond imagination He's worth our celebration Celebrate God in every song
are you doing? Yeah, guys, what? You've been walking around the house for days. What's what's going on? Well, we read the story in the Bible of when the Israelites marched around a city named Jericho. Tim, maybe we need to go and read that and find out what these children are up to. I think we should. Should we go and read that story? Yeah. Let's go. The warrior leader. After Moses died, God gave his people a new leader. His name was Joshua, which means the Lord saves. Joshua was going to lead God's people into a special land God had promised to give them. By this time, God's people had been wandering around in the baking desert for 40 years. So you can imagine how sick they were of sand and anything yellow and tents and walking and being hot. And how happy they were to reach the edge of the desert and to see their beautiful new home right there in front of them. All cool and green and lovely. There was only one problem. Jericho. Jericho was a city, but it wasn't just any old city. It was a fortress and it stopped anyone from getting into the land. The people looked at Jericho, at the big, giant, scary walls around it, at the tall, towering ramparts, at the heavy, bolted iron gates, and at each other. What would they do? No one knew. But God knew, and God told Joshua what to do. But Joshua must have looked a little surprised, because it was a very odd battle plan indeed, as we'll soon find out. Then God made his people a promise. I will always be with you, and I will never ever leave you. If you do what I say, your lives in the new land will be happy and everything will go well. So Joshua gathered his army together. They had their swords and spears and shields. They were ready to fight. But the plan wasn't about fighting. It was about trusting and doing what God said. Joshua's army went marching, marching, marching around the city, day after day after day. They're too scared to fight, the people in Jericho said. But they were wrong. God's people weren't scared. They were waiting, waiting for God to tell them what to do next. On the seventh day, God told his people to march around the city, not once, but seven times. Then God told everyone to make as much noise as they could. Has anyone ever told you to make as much noise as you possibly can? Well, imagine that noise and 39,999 other people making that noise too. You get the idea. Ear splitting. And as it turned out, stone splitting too. Because the huge strong walls of Jericho just crumbled to the ground as if they were made of sand. Jericho vanished in a great cloud of dust. I know what the children are doing. Ah! <laughs> trying to do. We just wanted to see if it would work. I don't want to see if it would work. I like the house as it is. I know. Now that the children aren't knocking the house down, I'm going to carry on with the story. <clears throat> so it was that God's people entered their new home and they didn't have to fight to get in. They only had to walk. Joshua said, God has brought you safely here. Now will you do what he says? Everyone said, we promise. Mm -hmm. Only God can make your hearts happy, Joshua said. So don't pray to pretend gods. No, they said, never. I'm afraid they didn't keep their promise. They didn't do what God said. And many years later, just as God had warned them, things would go badly for God's people. They would lose their home. 
Enemies would capture them and take them off as slaves and God's people would scatter into many different lands. But God's plan was still working and one day he would give his people another leader and another home. But this home no one could ever take from them. So in this story, God brings his chosen people to their promised land and it sounded like a lovely place. It did, it sounded amazing. And if God's people thought that they were going to have to fight to get into that city and to get through that city to get to their home, well, they were wrong, weren't they? They were wrong because God didn't want them to do it in their strength. He wanted them to trust him and do it in his strength. Even when that meant walking around the walls for seven days, some of them must have thought that was crazy. Lots of them trusted in God to do what he said he would do. Good job our children didn't carry on and knock our house down. Yeah, although I think our house probably would have been okay. No matter how much noise the children would have made, I don't think the house would have fallen down. Might have upset the neighbours though. Maybe. So they got there. They got there in God's strength and not theirs. And that taught them a really valuable lesson. God said to do what he told them to do. Yeah, and they listened that time, but sadly they didn't always listen. They walked away from God in the end, as we heard at the end of the story. And that's a pattern that runs through the whole of the Bible about God's people letting him down again and again. It does. We've mentioned it before, but keep your eyes open for it. As we go through the Old Testament, God tells his people that he loves them. He rescues them, he takes them somewhere safe, he asks them just to worship him. And what do they do? Go their own way. Every time. And next time, God rescues them, and so you get the picture. Hey Tim, do you think that sometimes we forget to trust in God and do things, try to do things in our own strength or in our own way? Yeah, I think you're right. I think there are a lot of occasions where we think we've got enough money, we've got enough clothes, we've got a house, we've got all the things that we need. We don't actually need God, but that's not really true, is it? Well, maybe we're worried about something like a test or friends being mean or something. And we forget to trust God with that too. Yeah, we try and fix it in our own way. We try and put things in place that we think will guarantee an outcome. But actually, God is in control of this. God is in charge of this. Yeah. Shall we pray about that? Absolutely. Let's pray about that. Dear God, we thank you that we can trust you to be in charge. We thank you that like you led the people of Jericho, you can lead us into living a good life for you. Amen. Amen. And Father God, we thank you that even though you know we are going to mess up, and even though we do repeatedly mess up, we know that if we are truly sorry that you will forgive us and you will always be there to look after us. Amen. Amen. Well. I'm glad that our house survived, and I'm glad that God's people got to the promised land in today's story. Me too. Shall we sing a song? Let's do that.
Well, I'm glad that our house survived. Well, I'm glad that our house survived. And I don't really suggest that you try walking around your houses. <laughs> Sorry. Can we start that one again? Yeah.